And now I feel extremely honored to introduce to you my next interview guest. That's the winner of this year's UEG Journal Best Paper Award, Liat Guten. Is that yes, correct? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Very well done. You Thank are you. doing your uh, your fellowship at the uh, Kaiser Permanente in San Francisco, United yes. States. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we chat about you as a researcher and uh, you as a person, um, let us just have a brief look into your paper. Uh, you were studying a cohort of 10 patients with Crohn's disease and uh, they were undergoing FMT, fecal uh, microbiota transplantation. Yes. Now, uh, FMT is a topic, a uh, very hot topic these days in many medical conditions mm -hmm. and it's debated not only in the field of uh, medical professionals but also in the layman uh, world. But I think you have to dash all our hopes uh, about this, uh, what is the FMT concern. Is that correct? Well, I don't know if that's necessarily correct, but I think it's, uh, I think it raised, our study raised some questions about it. It's been getting a lot of positive hype in the media, in a lot of different research studies with just very positive outcomes kind of all around. And I think if anything, our data was somewhat humbling, you know, that it's maybe not as effective as it's been reported to be in many of these studies. Um, and I think most importantly that there's some important side effects um, and, you know, risks for adverse events that are not to be taken lightly with this intervention. What did you find out? So our study, um, it was looking at a cohort of 10 patients who had Crohn's disease and many different stages of disease, different types of disease, um, and giving a fecal transplant to 10 of these patients. And we found one of the, the primary endpoints that we were looking at in our study was a clinical uh, improvement that we define as a Harvey, improvement of a Harvey Bradshaw index of at least three points. So we found that three out of 10 patients in our study met that criteria, which is actually a slightly lower number than had been previously reported in the literature. I think the studies that have been out there were saying something around 50% improvement rate. Um, and our study also found that two out of the 10 patients uh, had significant flares of their underlying disease after undergoing FMT within just a couple of days, which is a higher risk of adverse events that had also been reported in the literature. So there are, uh, well, there's harm involved with FMT as mm -hmm. well. Um, which is, uh, well, new to uh, some of us, I guess, because uh, many people thought the other way around. Yes. Now, um, what do you think will your results, what impact will they have on uh, the studies on Crohn's disease in the future? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, I think the, the amount of data that we have on fecal transplant and Crohn's disease is still very small. Um, there's, you know, the studies have been mostly kind of uh, case controls or, you know, um, case series, and ours was a case series as well. I think it adds some, you know, more numbers to the existing data and also really reinforces that we just need better randomized control trials in this specific cohort, you know, in this population of patients and patients with Crohn's disease. So I think it kind of just um, reinforces the need for better studies and also probably gives some uh, caution to proceeding with these studies. And, you know, there's a lot of people that actually try to do fecal transplant at home that have Crohn's disease or inflammatory bowel disease that just shows that it's not a completely benign intervention and that there needs to be some caution around using this intervention. And do you think that FMT could play a role, even if it's a minor role in Crohn's disease? I do. I think that with probably carefully selected patients, um, the right patients with the right donors, there probably are a subset of patients that have Crohn's disease that would benefit from FMT. But I think that kind of all comers with Crohn's disease, my feeling is they probably will not all respond to fecal transplant. Now, back to you as a person, yeah. as a researcher. Yeah. How did you decide to uh, go into this field of research? Mm -hmm. And you studied medicine, obviously. Yes. How? Tell us a little bit about your sure. uh, research and, and, and the way you decided to become what you are now. Yeah, so I, I did my residency at the UCSF in San Francisco. Um, and I knew I was interested in gastroenterology and I was looking for different research projects to get involved with. And I have a specific interest in inflammatory bowel disease. I just think the immune-mediated disorders of the GI tract are particularly interesting. And I also 
am interested in sort of novel therapies for treating. So diet, uh, fecal transplant, lifestyle modification, I think are all very interesting to me personally um, as treatments for all diseases and specifically inflammatory bowel disease. So I found um, my mentor at UCSF named Najwa El Nashef, who is, is kind of piloting the fecal transplant uh, program at UCSF. And she's doing a lot of studies in uh, inflammatory bowel disease, specifically ulcerative colitis and a little bit of Crohn's disease. Um, and she had an opportunity to kind of work with her on a, this study. Um, and so I jumped at the opportunity and got to kind of, you know, do this whole study with her and um, learned a lot along the way and, uh, you know, kind of reinforced my interest in the field. And uh, I, after doing the study, I matched in, as a fellow in gastroenterology at Kaiser Permanente, which is just down the street from UCSF in California. And I'm, you know, interested in IBD as a specialty within GI in the future. Um, and a lot of, you know, I definitely have a lot of interest in continuing work in the microbiome, in inflammatory bowel disease, and even other, you know, areas within GI, like uh, irritable bowel syndrome is another big area that they're talking a lot about microbiome research. So that's a little bit about me and kind of my interests. That's very interesting. Yeah. Leah, thank you very much for yeah. joining us. Thank you very much for being here and taking your time. Thank and you. again, congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay.